Section 26 of The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 9, Part 8 For Lent or a Fast Dinner. From To Make an Onion Pie. Wash and pare some potatoes and cut them in slices. Peel some onions, cut them in slices pare some apples and slice them make a good crust cover your dish lay a quarter of a pound of butter all over take a quarter of an ounce of mace beat fine a nutmeg grated a teaspoonful of beaten pepper three teaspoonfuls of salt mix all together strew some over the butter lay a layer of potatoes a layer of onion a layer of apples and a layer of eggs and so on till you have filled your pie strewing a little of the seasoning between each layer and a quarter of a pound of butter in bits and six spoonfuls of water close your pie and bake it an hour and a half a pound of potatoes a pound of onions a pound of apples and twelve eggs will do to make an orangeado pie make a good crust lay it over your dish take two oranges boil them with two lemons till tender in four or five quarts of water in the last water which there must be about a pint of add a pound of loaf sugar boil it take them out and slice them into your pie then pare twelve pippins core them and give them one boil in the syrup lay them all over the orange and lemon pour in the syrup and pour on them some orangeado syrup cover your pie and bake it in a slow oven half an hour to make a skirret pie take your skirrets and boil them tender peel them slice them fill your pie and take to half a pint of cream the yolk of an egg beat fine with a little nutmeg a little beaten mace and a little salt beat all together well with a quarter of a pound of fresh butter melted then pour in as much as your dish will hold put on the top crust and bake it half an hour you may put in some hard yolks of eggs if you cannot get cream put in milk but cream is best about two pounds of the root will do to make an apple pie make a good puff paste crust lay some round the sides of the dish pare and quarter your apples and take out the cores lay a row of apples thick throw in half the sugar you design for your pie mince a little lemon peel fine throw over and squeeze a little lemon over them then a few cloves here and there one then the rest of your apples and the rest of your sugar you must sweeten to your palate and squeeze a little more lemon boil the peeling of the apples and the cores in some fair water with a blade of mace till it is very good strain it and boil the syrup with a little sugar till there is but very little and good pour it into your pie put on your upper crust and bake it you may put in a little quince or marmalade if you please thus make a pear pie but do not put in any quince you may butter them when they come out of the oven or beat up the yolks of two eggs and half a pint of cream with a little nutmeg sweetened with sugar put it over a slow fire and keep stirring it till it just boils up take off the lid and pour in the cream cut the crust in three little corner pieces stick about the pie and send it to table cold green codling pie take some green codlings and put them in a clean pan with spring water lay vine or cabbage leaves over them and wrap a cloth over and round the pan to keep in the steam as soon as you think they are soft take the skins off put them in the same water with the leaves over them hang them a good distance from the fire to green and as soon as you see them of a fine green take them out of the water and put them in a deep dish and sweeten them with sugar 
and strew a little lemon peel shred fine over put a lid of puff paste over them and bake it when it is baked cut the lid off and cut it into three corner pieces and put them round your pie with one corner uppermost let it stand till it is cold and then make the following cream boil a pint of cream or milk beat up the yolks of four eggs sweeten it with fine sugar mix all well together and put it over the fire till it is thick and smooth but be sure you don't let it boil for that will curdle it and put it over your codling or you may put clouted cream if you like it best and send it to table cold to make a cherry pie make a good crust lay a little round the sides of your dish throw sugar at the bottom and lay in your fruit and sugar at top a few red currants does well with them put on your lid and bake in a slack oven make a plum pie the same way and a gooseberry pie if you would have it red let it stand a good while in the oven after the bread is drawn a custard is very good with the gooseberry pie to make a salt fish pie get a side of salt fish lay it in water all night next morning put it over the fire in a pan of water till it is tender drain it and lay it on the dresser take off all the skin and pick the meat clean from the bones mince it small then take the crumb of two french rolls cut in slices and boil it up with a quart of new milk break your bread very fine with a spoon put to it your minced salt fish a pound of melted butter two spoonfuls of minced parsley half a nutmeg grated a little beaten pepper and three teaspoonfuls of mustard mix all well together make a good crust and lay all over your dish and cover it up bake it an hour to make a carp pie take a large carp scale wash and gut it clean take an eel boil it just a little tender pick off all the meat and mince it fine with an equal quantity of crumbs of bread a few sweet herbs a lemon peel cut fine a little pepper salt and grated nutmeg an anchovy half a pint of oysters parboiled and chopped fine the yolks of three hard eggs cut small roll it up with a quarter of a pound of butter and fill the belly of the carp make a good crust cover the dish and lay in your carp save the liquor you boil your eel in put in the eel bones boil them with a little mace whole pepper an onion some sweet herbs and an anchovy boil it till there is about half a pint strain it add to it a quarter of a pint of white wine and a lump of butter as big as a hen's egg mixed in a very little flour boil it up and pour into your pie put on the lid and bake it an hour in a quick oven if there be any forcemeat left after filling the belly make balls of it and put into the pie if you have not liquor enough boil a few small eels to make enough to fill your dish to make a sole pie make a good crust cover your dish boil two pounds of eels tender pick all the flesh clean from the bones throw the bones into the liquor you boil the eels in with a little mace and salt till it is very good and about a quarter of a pint then strain it in the meantime cut the flesh of your eel fine with a little lemon peel shred fine a little salt pepper and nutmeg a few crumbs of bread chopped parsley and an anchovy melt a quarter of a pound of butter and mix with it then lay it in the dish cut the flesh off a pair of large soles or three pairs of very small ones clean from the bones and fins lay it on the forcemeat and pour in the broth of the eels you boiled put the lid of the pie on and bake it you should boil the bones of the soles with the eel bones to make it good if you boil the sole bones with one or two little eels without the forcemeat your pie will be very good 
and thus you may do a turbot to make an eel pie make a good crust clean gut and wash your eels very well then cut them in pieces half as long as your finger season them with pepper salt and a little beaten mace to your palate either high or low fill your dish with eels and put as much water as the dish will hold put on your cover and bake them well to make a flounder pie gut some flounders wash them clean dry them in a cloth just boil them cut off the meat clean from the bones lay a good crust over the dish and lay a little fresh butter at the bottom and on that the fish season with pepper and salt to your mind boil the bones in the water your fish was boiled in with a little bit of horseradish a little parsley a very little bit of lemon peel and a crust of bread boil it till there is just enough liquor for the pie then strain it and put it into your pie put on the top crust and bake it to make a herring pie scale gut and wash them very clean cut off the heads fins and tails make a good crust cover your dish then season your herrings with beaten mace pepper and salt put a little butter in the bottom of your dish then a row of herrings pare some apples and cut them in thin slices all over then peel some onions and cut them in slices all over thick lay a little butter on the top put in a little water lay on the lid and bake it well to make a salmon pie make a good crust cleanse a piece of salmon well season it with salt mace and nutmeg lay a piece of butter at the bottom of the dish and lay your salmon in melt butter according to your pie take a lobster boil it pick out all the flesh chop it small bruise the body mix it well with the butter which must be very good pour it over your salmon put on the lid and bake it well to make a lobster pie take two or three lobsters and boil them take the meat out of the tails whole cut them in four pieces long ways take out all the spawn and the meat of the claws beat it well in a mortar season it with pepper salt two spoonfuls of vinegar and a little anchovy liquor melt half a pound of fresh butter stir all together with the crumbs of a halfpenny roll rubbed through a fine cullender and the yolks of two eggs put a fine puff paste over your dish lay in your tails and the rest of the meat over them put on your cover and bake it in a slow oven to make a mussel pie make a good crust lay it all over the dish wash your mussels clean in several waters then put them in a deep stew pan cover them and let them stew till they are open pick them out and see there be no crabs under the tongue put them in a saucepan with two or three blades of mace strain liquor just enough to cover them a good piece of butter and a few crumbs of bread stew them a few minutes fill your pie put on the lid and bake it half an hour so you may make an oyster pie always let your fish be cold before you put on the lid or it will spoil the crust to make lent mince pies six eggs boiled hard and chopped fine twelve pippins pared and chopped small a pound of raisins of the sun stoned and chopped fine a pound of currants washed picked and rubbed clean a large spoonful of sugar beat fine an ounce of citron an ounce of candied orange both cut fine a quarter of an ounce of mace and cloves beat fine and a little nutmeg beat fine mix all together with a gill of brandy and a gill of sack make your crust good and bake it in a slack oven when you make your pie squeeze in the juice of a seville orange to collar salmon take a side of salmon cut off a handful of the tail wash your large piece very well dry it with a clean cloth 
wash it over with the yolks of eggs and then make force meat with what you cut off the tail but take off the skin and put to it a handful of parboiled oysters a tail or two of lobsters the yolks of three or four eggs boiled hard six anchovies a handful of sweet herbs chopped small a little salt cloves mace nutmeg pepper beat fine and grated bread work all these together into a body with the yolks of eggs lay it all over the fleshy part and a little more pepper and salt over the salmon so roll it up into a collar and bind it with broad tape then boil it in water salt and vinegar but let the liquor boil first then put in your collars a bunch of sweet herbs sliced ginger and nutmeg let it boil but not too fast it will take near two hours boiling when it is enough take it up into your sousing pan and when the pickle is cold put it to your salmon and let it stand in it till used or otherwise you may pot it fill it up with clarified butter as you pot fowls that way will keep longest to collar eels take your eel and scar it well with salt wipe it clean then cut it down the back take out the bone cut the head and tail off put the yolk of an egg over it and then take four cloves two blades of mace half a nutmeg beat fine a little pepper and salt some chopped parsley and sweet herbs chopped fine mix them all together and sprinkle over it roll the eel up very tight and tie it in a cloth put on water enough to boil it and put in an onion some cloves and mace four bay leaves boil it up with the bones head and tail for half an hour with a little vinegar and salt then take out the bones etc and put in your eels boil them if large two hours lesser in proportion when done put them away to cool then take them out of the liquor and cloth and cut them in slices or send them whole with raw parsley under and over note well you must take them out of the cloth and put them in the liquor and tie them close down to keep to pickle or bake herrings scale and wash them clean cut off the heads take out the rows or wash them clean and put them in again as you like season them with a little mace and cloves beet a very little beaten pepper and salt lay them in a deep pan lay two or three bay leaves between each lay put in half vinegar and half water or rape vinegar cover it close with a brown paper and send it to the oven to bake let it stand till cold thus do sprats some use only allspice but that is not so good to pickle or bake mackerel to keep all the year gut them cut off their heads cut them open dry them well with a clean cloth take a pan which they will lie cleverly in lay a few bay leaves at the bottom rub the bone with a little bay salt beat fine take a little beaten mace a few cloves beat fine black and white pepper beat fine mix a little salt rub them inside and out with the spice lay them in a pan and between every lay of the mackerel put a few bay leaves then cover them with vinegar tie them down close with brown paper and put them into a slow oven they will take a good while doing when they are enough uncover them let them stand till cold then pour away all that vinegar and put as much good vinegar as will cover them and an onion stuck with cloves send them to the oven again let them stand two hours in a very slow oven and they will keep all the year but you must not put in your hands to take out the mackerel if you can avoid it but take a slice to take them out with the great bones of the mackerel taken out and broiled this is a pretty little plate to fill up the corner of a table to souse mackerel 
you must wash them clean gut them and boil them in salt and water till they are enough take them out lay them in a clean pan cover them with the liquor add a little vinegar and when you send them to table lay fennel over them to pot a lobster take a live lobster boil it in salt and water and peg it that no water gets in when it is cold pick out all the flesh and body take out the gut beat it fine in a mortar and season it with beaten mace grated nutmeg pepper and salt mix all together melt a little piece of butter as big as a large walnut and mix it with the lobster as you are beating it when it is beat to a paste put it into your potting pot and put it down as close and hard as you can then set some fresh butter in a deep broad pan before the fire and when it is all melted take off the scum at the top if any and pour the clear butter over the meat as thick as a crown piece the whey and churn milk will settle at the bottom of the pan but take great care none of that goes in and always let your butter be very good or you will spoil all or only put the meat whole with the body mixed among it laying them as close together as you can and pour the butter over them you must be sure to let the lobster be well boiled a middling one will take half an hour boiling to pot eels take a large eel skin it cleanse it and wash it very clean dry it in a cloth and cut it into pieces as long as your finger season them with a little beaten mace and nutmeg pepper salt and a little sal prunella beat fine lay them in a pan then pour as much good butter over them as will cover them and clarified as above they must be baked half an hour in a quick oven if a slow oven longer till they are enough but that you must judge by the largeness of the eels with a fork take them out and lay them on a coarse cloth to drain when they are quite cold season them again with the same seasoning lay them in the pot close then take off the butter they were baked in clear from the gravy of the fish and set it in a dish before the fire when it is melted pour the clear butter over the eels and let them be covered with the butter in the same manner you may pot what you please you may bone your eels if you choose it but then do not put in any salprunella to pot lampreys skin them cleanse them with salt then wipe them dry beat some black pepper mace and cloves mix them with salt and season them lay them in a pan and cover them with clarified butter bake them an hour order them as the eels only let them be seasoned and one will be enough for a pot you must season them well let your butter be good and they will keep a long time to pot chars after having cleansed them cut off the fins tails and heads then lay them in rows in a long baking pan cover them with butter and order them as above to pot a pike you must scale it cut off the head split it and take out the chine bone then strew all over the inside some bay salt and pepper roll it up round and lay it in a pot cover it and bake it an hour then take it out and lay it on a coarse cloth to drain when it is cold put it into your pot and cover it with clarified butter to pot salmon take a piece of fresh salmon scale it and wipe it clean let your piece or pieces be as big as will lie cleverly on your pot season it with jamaica pepper black pepper mace and cloves beat fine mixed with salt a little salprunella beat fine and rub the bone with season with a little of the spice pour clarified butter over it and bake it well then take it out carefully and lay it to drain when cold 
season it well lay it in your pot close and cover it with clarified butter as above thus you may do carp tench trout and several sorts of fish another way to pot salmon scale and clean your salmon cut it down the back dry it well and cut it as near the shape of your pot as you can take two nutmegs an ounce of mace and cloves beaten half an ounce of white pepper and an ounce of salt then take out all the bones cut off the jowl below the fins and cut off the tail season the scaly side first lay that at the bottom of the pot then rub the seasoning on the other side cover it with a dish and let it stand all night it must be put double and the scaly side top and bottom put butter bottom and top and cover the pot with some stiff coarse paste three hours will bake it if a large fish if a small one two hours and when it comes out of the oven let it stand half an hour then uncover it and raise it up at one end that the gravy may run out then put a trencher and a weight on it to press out the gravy when the butter is cold take it out clear from the gravy add some more to it and put it in a pan before the fire when it is melted pour it over the salmon and when it is cold paper it up as to the seasoning of these things it must be according to your palate more or less note well always take great care that no gravy or whey of the butter is left in the potting if there is it will not keep end of section 26section 27 of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter 10 directions for the sick i do not pretend to meddle here in the physical way but a few directions for the cook or nurse i presume will not be improper to make such a diet etc as the doctor shall order to make mutton broth take a pound of a loin of mutton take off the fat put to it one quart of water let it boil and skim it well then put in a good piece of upper crust of bread and one large blade of mace cover it close and let it boil slowly an hour do not stir it but pour the broth clear off season it with a little salt and the mutton will be fit to eat if you boil turnips do not boil them in the broth but by themselves in another saucepan to boil a scrag of veal set on the scrag in a clean saucepan to each pound of veal put a quart of water skim it very clean then put in a good piece of upper crust a blade of mace to each pound and a little parsley tied with a thread cover it close then let it boil very softly two hours and both broth and meat will be fit to eat to make beef or mutton broth for very weak people who take but little nourishment take a pound of beef or mutton or both together to a pound put two quarts of water first skin the meat and take off the fat then cut it into little pieces and boil it till it comes to a quarter of a pint season it with a very little corn of salt skim off all the fat and give a spoonful of this broth at a time to very weak people half a spoonful is enough to some a teaspoonful at a time and to others a teacupful there is greater nourishment from this than anything else to make beef drink which is ordered for weak people take a pound of lean beef then take off all the fat and skin cut it into pieces put it into a gallon of water with the under crust of a penny loaf and a very little salt let it boil 
till it comes to two quarts then strain it off and it is a very hearty drink to make beef tea take a pound of lean beef and cut it very fine pour a pint of boiling water over it and put it on the fire to raise the scum skim it clean strain it off and let it settle pour it clear from the settling and then it is fit for use to make pork broth take two pounds of young pork then take off the skin and fat boil it in a gallon of water with a turnip and a very little corn of salt let it boil till it comes to two quarts strain it off and let it stand till cold take off the fat then leave the settling at the bottom of the pan and drink half a pint in the morning fasting an hour before breakfast and at noon if the stomach will bear it to boil a chicken let your saucepan be very clean and nice when the water boils put in your chicken which must be very nicely picked and clean and laid in cold water a quarter of an hour before it is boiled then take it out of the water boiling and lay it in a pewter dish save all the liquor that runs from it in the dish cut up your chicken all in joints in the dish then bruise the liver very fine add a little boiled parsley chopped fine a very little salt and a little grated nutmeg mix it all well together with two spoonfuls of the liquor of the fowl and pour it into the dish with the rest of the liquor in the dish if there is not liquor enough take two or three spoonfuls of the liquor it was boiled in clap another dish over it then set it over a chafing dish of hot coals five or six minutes and carry it to table hot with the cover on this is better than butter and lighter for the stomach though some choose it only with the liquor and no parsley nor liver and that is according to different palates if it is for a very weak person take off the skin of the chicken before you set it on the chafing dish if you roast it make nothing but bread sauce and that is lighter than any sauce you can make for a weak stomach thus you may dress a rabbit only bruise but a little piece of the liver to boil pigeons let your pigeons be cleaned washed drawn and skinned boil them in milk and water ten minutes and pour over them sauce made thus take the livers parboiled and bruise them fine with as much parsley boiled and chopped fine melt some butter mix a little with the liver and parsley first then mix all together and pour over the pigeons to boil a partridge or any other wild fowl when your water boils put in your partridge let it boil ten minutes then take it up into a pewter plate and cut it in two laying the insides next the plate and have ready some bread sauce made thus take the crumb of a halfpenny roll or thereabouts and boil it in half a pint of water with a blade of mace let it boil two or three minutes pour away most of the water then beat it up with a little piece of nice butter a little salt and pour it over the partridge clap a cover over it then set it over a chafing dish of coals four or five minutes and send it away hot covered close thus you may dress any sort of wild fowl only boiling it more or less according to the bigness ducks take off the skins before you pour the bread sauce over them and if you roast them lay bread sauce under them it is lighter than gravy for weak stomachs to boil a place or flounder let your water boil throw some salt in then put in your fish boil it till you think it is enough and take it out of the water in a slice to drain take two spoonfuls of the liquor with a little salt a little grated nutmeg then beat up the yolk of an egg very well with the liquor and stir in the egg 
beat it well together with a knife carefully slice away all the little bones round the fish pour the sauce over it then set it over a chafing dish of coals for a minute and send it hot away or in the room of this sauce add melted butter in a cup to mince veal or chicken for the sick or weak people mince a chicken or some veal very fine take off the skin just boil as much water as will moisten it and no more with a very little salt grate a very little nutmeg then throw a little flour over it and when the water boils put in the meat keep shaking it about over the fire a minute then have ready two or three very thin sippets toasted nice and brown laid in the plate and pour the mincemeat over it to pull a chicken for the sick you must take as much cold chicken as you think proper take off the skin and pull the meat into little bits as thick as a quill then take the bones boil them with a little salt till they are good strain it then take a spoonful of the liquor a spoonful of milk a little bit of butter as big as a large nutmeg rolled in flour a little chopped parsley as much as will lie on a sixpence and a little salt if wanted this will be enough for half a small chicken put all together into the saucepan then keep shaking it till it is thick and pour it into a hot plate to make chicken broth you must take an old cock or large fowl flay it then pick off all the fat and break it all to pieces with a rolling pin put it into two quarts of water with a good crust of bread and a blade of mace let it boil softly till it is as good as you would have it if you do it as it should be done it will take five or six hours doing pour it off then put a quart more of boiling water and cover it close let it boil softly till it is good and strain it off season with a very little salt when you boil a chicken save the liquor and when the meat is eat take the bones then break them and put to the liquor you boiled the chicken in with a blade of mace and a crust of bread let it boil till it is good and strain it off to make chicken water take a cock or large fowl flay it then bruise it with a hammer and put it into a gallon of water with a crust of bread let it boil half away and strain it off to make white cordial you must take two quarts of water mix in four spoonfuls of oatmeal a blade or two of mace a piece of lemon peel let it boil and keep stirring it often let it boil about a quarter of an hour and take care it does not boil over then strain it through a coarse sieve when you use it sweeten it to your palate grate in a little nutmeg and what wine is proper and if it is not for a sick person squeeze in the juice of a lemon to make brown cordial boil the gruel as above with six spoonfuls of oatmeal and strain it then add a quart of good ale not bitter boil it then sweeten it to your palate and add half a pint of white wine when you do not put in white wine let it be half ale to make water gruel you must take a pint of water and a large spoonful of oatmeal then stir it together and let it boil up three or four times stirring often do not let it boil over then strain it through a sieve salt it to your palate put in a good piece of fresh butter brew it with a spoon till the butter is all melted then it will be fine and smooth and very good some love a little pepper in it to make panada you must take a quart of water in a nice clean saucepan a blade of mace a large piece of crumb of bread let it boil two minutes then take out the bread and bruise it in a basin very fine mix as much water as will make it as thick as you would have 
the rest pour away and sweeten it to your palate put in a piece of butter as big as a walnut do not put in any wine it spoils it you may grate in a little nutmeg this is hearty and good diet for sick people to boil sago put a large spoonful of sago into three quarters of a pint of water stir it and boil it softly till it is as thick as you would have it then put in wine and sugar with a little nutmeg to your palate to boil salop it is a hard stone ground to powder and generally sold for one shilling an ounce take a large teaspoonful of the powder and put it into a pint of boiling water keep stirring it till it is like a fine jelly then put wine and sugar to your palate and lemon if it will agree to make icing glass jelly take a quart of water one ounce of icing glass half an ounce of cloves boil them to a pint then strain it upon a pound of loaf sugar and when cold sweeten your tea with it you may make the jelly as above and leave out the cloves sweeten to your palate and add a little wine all other jellies you have in another chapter to make the pectoral drink take a gallon of water and half a pound of pearl barley boil it with a quarter of a pound of figs split a pennyworth of licorice sliced to pieces a quarter of a pound of raisins of the sun stoned boil all together till half is wasted then strain it off this is ordered in the measles and several other disorders for a drink to make buttered water or what the germans call egg soup who are very fond of it for supper you have it in the chapter for lent take a pint of water beat up the yolk of an egg with the water put in a piece of butter as big as a small walnut two or three knobs of sugar and keep stirring it all the time it is on the fire when it begins to boil bruise it between the saucepan and a mug till it is smooth and has a great froth then it is fit to drink this is ordered in a cold or where egg will agree with the stomach to make seed water take a spoonful of coriander seed half a spoonful of caraway seed bruised and boiled in a pint of water then strain it and bruise it with the yolk of an egg mix it with sack and double refined sugar according to your palate to make bread soup for the sick take a quart of water set it on the fire in a clean saucepan and as much dry crust of bread cut to pieces as the top of a penny loaf the drier the better a bit of butter as big as a walnut let it boil then beat it with a spoon and keep boiling it till the bread and water is well mixed then season it with a very little salt and it is a pretty thing for a weak stomach to make artificial asses milk take two ounces of pearl barley two large spoonfuls of hartshorn shavings one ounce of oringo root one ounce of china root one ounce of preserved ginger eighteen snails bruised with the shells to be boiled in three quarts of water till it comes to three pints then boil a pint of new milk and put in two ounces of balsam of tolu take half a pint in the morning and half a pint at night cow's milk next to ass's milk done thus take a quart of milk set it in a pan overnight the next morning take off all the cream then boil it and set it in the pan again till night then skim it again boil it set it in the pan again and the next morning skim it warm it blood warm and drink it as you do ass's milk it is very near as good and with some consumptive people it is better to make a good drink boil a quart of milk and a quart of water with the top crust of a penny loaf 
and one blade of mace a quarter of an hour very softly then pour it off and when you drink it let it be warm to make barley water put a quarter of a pound of pearl barley into two quarts of water let it boil skim it very clean boil half away and strain it off sweeten to your palate but not too sweet and put in two spoonfuls of white wine drink it lukewarm to make sage tea take a little sage a little balm put it into a pan slice a lemon peel and all a few knobs of sugar one glass of white wine pour on these two or three quarts of boiling water cover it and drink when thirsty when you think it strong enough of the herbs take them out otherwise it will make it bitter to make it for a child a little sage balm rue mint and penny royal pour boiling water on and sweeten to your palate syrup of cloves etc and black cherry water you have in the chapter of preserves liquor for a child that has the thrush take half a pint of spring water a knob of double refined sugar a very little bit of alum beat it well together with the yolk of an egg then beat it in a large spoonful of the juice of sage tie a rag to the end of the stick dip it in this liquor and often clean the mouth give the child overnight one drop of laudanum and the next day proper physic washing the mouth often with the liquor to boil comfrey roots take a pound of comfrey roots scrape them clean cut them into little pieces and put them into three pints of water let them boil till there is about a pint then strain it and when it is cold put it into a saucepan if there is any settling at the bottom throw it away mix it with sugar to your palate half a pint of mountain wine and the juice of a lemon let it boil then pour it into a clean earthen pot and set it by for use some boil it in milk and it is very good where it will agree and is reckoned a very great strengthener to make the knuckle broth take twelve shank ends of a leg of mutton break them well and soak them in cold spring water for an hour then take a small brush and scar them clean with warm water and salt then put them in two quarts of spring water and let them simmer till reduced to one quart when they have been on one hour put in one ounce of hartshorn shavings and the bottom of a halfpenny roll be careful to take the scum off as it rises when done strain it off and if any fat remains take it off with a knife when cold drink a quarter of a pint warm when you go to bed and one hour before you rise it is a certain restorative at the beginning of a decline or when any weakness is the complaint note well if it is made right it is the colour of calf's foot jelly and is strong enough to bear a spoon upright from the college of physicians london a medicine for a disorder in the bowels take an ounce of beef suet half a pint of milk and half a pint of water mix together with a tablespoonful of wheat flour put it over the fire ten minutes and keep it stirring all the time and take a coffee cup full two or three times a day End of section 27section twenty eight of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter eleven for captains of ships to make ketchup to keep twenty years take a gallon of strong stale beer one pound of anchovies washed from the pickle a pound of shallots peeled half an ounce of mace 
half an ounce of cloves, a quarter of an ounce of whole pepper, three or four large races of ginger, two quarts of the large mushroom flaps rubbed to pieces. Cover all this close, and let it simmer till it is half wasted, then strain it through a flannel bag. Let it stand till it is quite cold, then bottle it. You may carry it to the Indies. A spoonful of this to a pound of fresh butter melted makes a fine fish sauce, or in the room of gravy sauce. The stronger and staler the beer is, the better the ketchup will be. To make fish sauce to keep the whole year. You must take twenty-four anchovies, chop them, bones and all. Put to them ten shallots cut small, a handful of scraped horseradish, a quarter of an ounce of mace, a quart of white wine, a pint of water, one lemon cut into slices, half a pint of anchovy liquor, a pint of red wine, twelve cloves, twelve peppercorns. Boil them together till it comes to a quart. Strain it off, cover it close and keep it in a cold, dry place. Two spoonfuls will be sufficient for a pound of butter. It is a pretty sauce, either for boiled fowl, veal, etc. Or, in the room of gravy, lowering it with hot water and thickening it with a piece of butter rolled in flour. To pot dripping, to fry fish, meat, fritters, etc. Take six pounds of good beef dripping, boil it in soft water, strain it into a pan let it stand till cold then take off the hard fat and scrape off the gravy which sticks to the inside thus do eight times when it is cold and hard take it off clean from the water put it into a large saucepan with six bay leaves twelve cloves half a pound of salt and a quarter of a pound of whole pepper let the fat be all melted and just hot. Let it stand till it is hot enough to strain through a sieve into the pot, and stand till it is quite cold, then cover it up. Thus you may do what quantity you please. The best way to keep any sort of dripping is to turn the pot upside down, and then no rats can get at it. If it will keep on shipboard, it will make as fine puff paste crust as any butter can do, or crust for puddings, etc. To pickle mushrooms for the sea. Wash them clean with a piece of flannel in salt and water. Put them into a saucepan and throw a little salt over them. Let them boil up three times in their own liquor. Then throw them into a sieve to drain and spread them on a clean cloth. Let them lie till cold, then put them in wide-mouthed bottles. Put in with them a good deal of whole mace, a little nutmeg sliced, and a few cloves. Boil the sugar vinegar of your own making with a good deal of whole pepper, some races of ginger, and two or three bay leaves. Let it boil a few minutes, then strain it. When it is cold, pour it on, and fill the bottle with mutton fat fried cork them tie a bladder then a leather over them keep it down close and in as cool a place as possible as to all other pickles you have them in the chapter of pickles to make mushroom powder take half a peck of fine large thick mushrooms wash them clean from grit and dirt with a flannel rag scrape out the inside cut out all the worms Put them into a kettle over the fire without any water, two large onions stuck with cloves, a large handful of salt, a quarter of an ounce of mace, two teaspoonfuls of beaten pepper. Let them simmer till the liquor is boiled away. Take great care they do not burn. Then lay them on sieves to dry in the sun or in tin plates, and set them in a slack oven all night to dry, till they will beat to powder. Press the powder down hard in a pot, and keep it for use. You may put what quantity you please for the sauce. To keep mushrooms without pickle. Take large mushrooms, 
peel them scrape out the inside put them into a saucepan throw a little salt over them and let them boil in their own liquor then throw them into a sieve to drain then lay them on tin plates and set them in a cool oven repeat it often till they are perfectly dry put them into a clean stone jar tie them down tight and keep them in a dry place they eat deliciously and look as well as truffles to keep artichoke bottoms dry boil them just so as you can pull off the leaves and the choke cut them from the stalks lay them on tin plates set them in a very cool oven and repeat it till they are quite dry then put them in a paper bag tie them up close and hang them up in a dry place keep them in a dry place and when you use them lay them in warm water till they are tender shift the water two or three times they are fine in almost all sauces cut to little pieces and put in just before your sauce is enough to fry artichoke bottoms lay them in water as above then have ready some butter hot in the pan flour the bottoms and fry them lay them in your dish and pour melted butter over them to ragout artichoke bottoms take twelve bottoms soften them in warm water as in the foregoing receipts take half a pint of water a piece of the strong soup as big as a small walnut half a spoonful of the ketchup five or six of the dried mushrooms a teaspoonful of the mushroom powder set it on the fire shake all together and let it boil softly two or three minutes let the last water you put to the bottoms boil take them out hot lay them in your dish pour the sauce over them and send them to table hot to dress fish as to drying fish first wash it very clean then dry it well and flour it take some of the beef dripping make it boil in the stew pan then throw in your fish and fry it of a fine light brown lay it on the bottom of a sieve or coarse cloth to drain and make sauce according to your fancy to bake fish butter the pan lay in the fish throw a little salt over it and flour put a very little water in the dish an onion and a bundle of sweet herbs stick some little bits of butter or the fine dripping on the fish let it be baked of a fine light brown when enough lay it on a dish before the fire and skim off all the fat in the pan strain the liquor and mix it up either with the fish sauce or strong soup or the ketchup to make a gravy soup only boil soft water and put as much of the strong soup to it as will make it to your palate let it boil and if it wants salt you must season it the receipts for the soup you have in the chapter for soups to make peas soup get a quart of peas boil them in two gallons of water till they are tender then have a ready piece of salt pork or beef which has been laid in water the night before put it into the pot with two large onions peeled a bundle of sweet herbs celery if you have it half a quarter of an ounce of whole pepper let it boil till the meat is enough then take it up and if the soup is not enough let it boil till the soup is good then strain it set it on again to boil and rub in a good deal of dry mint keep the meat hot when the soup is ready put in the meat again for a few minutes and let it boil then serve it away if you add a piece of the portable soup it will be very good the onion soup you have in the lent chapter to make pork pudding or beef make a good crust with the dripping or mutton suet if you have it shred fine make a thick crust take a piece of salt pork or beef which has been twenty-four hours in soft water season it with a little pepper put it into this crust roll it up close tie it in a cloth and boil it 
if for about four or five pounds boil it five hours and when you kill mutton make a pudding the same way only cut the steaks thin season them with pepper and salt and boil it three hours if large or two hours if small and so according to the size apple pudding make with the same crust only pare the apples core them and fill your pudding if large it will take five hours boiling when it is enough lay it in the dish cut a hole in the top and stir in butter and sugar lay the piece on again and send it to table a prune pudding eats fine made the same way only when the crust is ready fill it with prunes and sweeten it according to your fancy close it up and boil it two hours to make a rice pudding take what rice you think proper tie it loose in a cloth and boil it an hour then take it up and untie it grate a good deal of nutmeg in stir in a good piece of butter and sweeten to your palate tie it up close boil it an hour more then take it up and turn it into your dish melt butter with a little sugar and a little white wine for sauce to make a suet pudding get a pound of suet shred fine a pound of flour a pound of currants picked clean half a pound of raisins stoned two teaspoonfuls of beaten ginger and a spoonful of tincture of saffron mix all together with salt water very thick then either boil or bake it a liver pudding boiled get the liver of a sheep when you kill one and cut it as thin as you can and chop it mix it with as much suet shred fine half as many crumbs of bread or biscuit grated season it with some sweet herbs shred fine a little nutmeg grated a little beaten pepper and an anchovy shred fine mix all together with a little salt or the anchovy liquor with a piece of butter fill the crust and close it boil it three hours to make an oatmeal pudding get a pint of oatmeal once cut a pound of suet shred fine a pound of currants and half a pound of raisins stoned mix all together well with a little salt tie it in a cloth leaving room for the swelling to bake an oatmeal pudding boil a quart of water season it with a little salt when the water boils stir in the oatmeal till it is so thick you cannot easily stir your spoon then take it off the fire stir in two spoonfuls of brandy or a gill of mountain and sweeten it to your palate grate in a little nutmeg and stir in half a pound of currants clean washed and picked then butter a pan pour it in and bake it half an hour a rice pudding baked boil a pound of rice just till it is tender then drain all the water from it as dry as you can but do not squeeze it then stir in a good piece of butter and sweeten to your palate grate a small nutmeg in stir it all well together butter a pan and pour it in and bake it you may add a few currants for change to make a peas pudding boil it till it is quite tender then take it up untie it stir in a good piece of butter a little salt and a good deal of beaten pepper then tie it up tight again boil it an hour longer and it will eat fine all other puddings you have in the chapter of puddings to make a haricot of french beans take a pint of the seeds of french beans which are ready dried for sowing wash them clean and put them into a two quart saucepan fill it with water and let them boil two hours if the water wastes away too much you must put in more boiling water to keep them boiling in the meantime take almost half a pound of nice fresh butter put it into a clean stew pan and when it is all melted and done making any noise have ready a pint basin heaped up with onions peeled and sliced thin and fry them of a fine brown 
stirring them about that they may be all alike then pour off the clear water from the beans into a basin and throw the beans all into the stew pan stir all together and throw in a large teaspoonful of beaten pepper two heaped full of salt and stir it all together for two or three minutes you may make this dish of what thickness you think proper either to eat with a spoon or otherwise with the liquor you poured off the beans for change you may make it thin enough for soup when it is of the proper thickness you like it take it off the fire and stir in a large spoonful of vinegar and the yolks of two eggs beat the eggs may be left out if disliked dish it up and send it to table to make a fowl pie first make rich thick crust cover the dish with the paste then take some very fine bacon or cold boiled ham slice it and lay a layer all over season with a little pepper then put in the fowl after it is picked and cleaned and singed shake a very little pepper and salt into the belly put in a little water cover it with ham seasoned with a little beaten pepper put on the lid and bake it two hours when it comes out of the oven take half a pint of water boil it and add to it as much of the strong soup as will make the gravy quite rich pour it boiling hot into the pie and lay on the lid again send it to table hot or lay a piece of beef or pork in soft water twenty-four hours slice it in the room of the ham and it will eat fine to make a cheshire pork pie for sea take some salt pork that has been boiled cut it into thin slices an equal quantity of potatoes pared and sliced thin make a good crust cover the dish lay a layer of meat seasoned with a little pepper and a layer of potatoes then a layer of meat a layer of potatoes and so on till your pie is full season it with pepper when it is full lay some butter on the top and fill your dish above half full of soft water close your pie up and bake it in a gentle oven to make sea venison when you kill a sheep keep stirring the blood all the time till it is cold or at least as cold as it will be that it may not congeal then cut up the sheep take one side cut the leg like a haunch cut off the shoulder and loin the neck and breast in two steep them all in the blood as long as the weather will permit you then take out the haunch and hang it out of the sun as long as you can to be sweet and roast it as you do a haunch of venison it will eat very fine especially if the heat will give you leave to keep it long take off all the suet before you lay it in the blood take the other joints and lay them in a large pan pour over them a quart of red wine and a quart of rape vinegar lay the fat side of the meat downwards in the pan on a hollow tray as best and pour the wine and vinegar over it let it lie twelve hours then take the neck breast and loin out of the pickle let the shoulder lie a week if the heat will let you rub it with bay salt saltpetre and coarse sugar of each a quarter of an ounce one handful of common salt and let it lie a week or ten days bone the neck breast and loin season them with pepper and salt to your palate and make a pasty as you do venison boil the bones for gravy to fill the pie when it comes out of the oven and the shoulder boil fresh out of the pickle with a peas pudding and when you cut up the sheep take the heart liver and lights boil them a quarter of an hour then cut them small and chop them very fine season them with four large blades of mace twelve cloves and a large nutmeg all beat to powder chop a pound of suet fine half a pound of sugar two pounds of currants clean washed half a pint of red wine mix all well together and make a pie 
bake it an hour it is very rich to make dumplings when you have white bread take the crumb of a tuppenny loaf grated fine as much beef suet shred as fine as possible a little salt half a small nutmeg grated a large spoonful of sugar beat two eggs with two spoonfuls of sack mix all well together and roll them up as big as a turkey's egg let the water boil and throw them in half an hour will boil them for sauce melt butter with a little salt lay the dumplings in a dish pour the sauce over them and strew sugar all over the dish these are very pretty either at land or sea you must observe to rub your hands with flour when you make them up the portable soup to carry abroad you have in the sixth chapter end of section twenty eight section twenty nine of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter twelve of hogs puddings sausages etc to make almond hogs puddings take two pounds of beef suet or marrow shred very small a pound and a half of almonds blanched and beat very fine with rose water one pound of grated bread a pound and a quarter of fine sugar a little salt half an ounce of mace nutmeg and cinnamon together twelve yolks of eggs four whites a pint of sack a pint and a half of thick cream some rose or orange flower water boil the cream tie the saffron in a bag and dip in the cream to colour it first beat your eggs very well then stir in your almonds then the spice the salt and suet and mix all your ingredients together fill your guts but half full put some bits of citron in the guts as you fill them tie them up and boil them a quarter of an hour another way take a pound of beef marrow chopped fine half a pound of sweet almonds blanched and beat fine with a little orange flour or rose water half a pound of white bread grated fine half a pound of currants clean washed and picked a quarter of a pound of fine sugar a quarter of an ounce of mace nutmeg and cinnamon together of each an equal quantity and half a pint of sack mix all well together with half a pint of good cream and the yolks of four eggs fill your guts half full tie them up and boil them a quarter of an hour and prick them as they boil to keep the guts from breaking you may leave out the currants for change but then you must add a quarter of a pound more of sugar a third way half a pint of cream a quarter of a pound of sugar a quarter of a pound of currants the crumb of a halfpenny roll grated fine six large pippins pared and chopped fine a gill of sack or two spoonfuls of rose water six bitter almonds blanched and beat fine the yolks of two eggs and one white beat fine mix all together fill the guts better than half full and boil them a quarter of an hour to make hogs puddings with currants take three pounds of grated bread to four pounds of beef suet finely shred two pounds of currants clean picked and washed cloves mace and cinnamon of each a quarter of an ounce finely beaten a little salt a pound and a half of sugar a pint of sack a quart of cream a little rose water twenty eggs well beaten but half the whites mix all these well together fill the guts half full boil them a little and prick them as they boil to keep them from breaking the guts take them up upon clean cloths then lay them on your dish or when you use them boil them a few minutes or eat them cold to make black puddings first before you kill your hog get a peck of gruts boil them half an hour in water then drain them and put them into a clean tub or large pan 
then kill your hog and save two quarts of the blood of the hog and keep stirring it till the blood is quite cold then mix it with your gruts and stir them well together season with a large spoonful of salt a quarter of an ounce of cloves mace and nutmeg together an equal quantity of each dry it beat it well and mix in take a little winter savoury sweet marjoram and thyme penny royal stripped of the stalks and chopped very fine just enough to season them and to give them a flavour but no more the next day take the leaf of the hog and cut into dice scrape and wash the guts very clean then tie one end and begin to fill them mix in the fat as you fill them be sure put in a good deal of fat fill the skins three parts full tie the other end and make your puddings what length you please prick them with a pin and put them in a kettle of boiling water boil them very softly an hour then take them out and lay them on clean straw in scotland they make a pudding with the blood of a goose chop off the head and save the blood stir it till it is cold then mix it with gruts spice salt and sweet herbs according to their fancy and some beef suet chopped take the skin off the neck then pull out the windpipe and fat fill the skin tie it at both ends so make a pie of the giblets and lay the pudding in the middle or you may leave the gruts out if you please saveloys take six pound of young pork free it from bone and skin and salt it with one ounce of salt petre and a pound of common salt for two days chop it very fine put in three teaspoonfuls of pepper twelve sage leaves chopped fine and a pound of grated bread mix it well and fill the guts and bake them half an hour in a slack oven and eat either hot or cold to make fine sausages you must take six pounds of good pork free from skin gristles and fat cut it very small and beat it in a mortar till it is very fine then shred six pounds of beef suet very fine and free from all skin shred it as fine as possible even take a good deal of sage wash it very clean pick off the leaves and shred it very fine spread your meat on a clean dresser or table then shake the sage all over about three large spoonfuls shred the thin rind of a middling lemon very fine and throw over with as many sweet herbs when shred fine as will fill a large spoon grate two nutmegs over throw over two teaspoonfuls of pepper a large spoonful of salt then throw over the suet and mix it all well together put it down close in a pot when you use them roll them up with as much egg as will make them roll smooth make them the size of a sausage and fry them in butter or good dripping be sure it be hot before you put them in and keep rolling them about when they are thorough hot and of a fine light brown they are enough you may chop this meat very fine if you do not like it beat veal eats well done thus or veal and pork together you may clean some guts and fill them to make common sausages take three pounds of nice pork fat and lean together without skin or gristles chop it as fine as possible season it with a teaspoonful of beaten pepper and two of salt some sage shred fine about three teaspoonfuls mix it well together have the guts very nicely cleaned and fill them or put them down in a pot so roll them of what size you please and fry them beef makes very good sausages oxford sausages take a pound of lean veal a pound of young pork fat and lean free from skin and gristle a pound of beef suet chopped all fine together put in half a pound of grated bread half the peel of a lemon shred fine a nutmeg grated six sage leaves washed and chopped very fine a teaspoonful of pepper and two of salt 
some thyme savoury and marjoram shred fine mix it all well together and put it close down in a pan when you use it roll it out the size of a common sausage and fry them in fresh butter of a fine brown or broil them over a clear fire and send them to table as hot as possible to make bologna sausages take a pound of bacon fat and lean together a pound of beef a pound of veal a pound of pork a pound of beef suet cut them small and chop them fine take a small handful of sage pick off the leaves chop it fine with a few sweet herbs season pretty high with pepper and salt you must have a large gut and fill it then set on a saucepan of water when it boils put it in and prick the gut for fear of bursting boil it softly an hour then lay it on clean straw to dry End of section 29section thirty of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter thirteen to pot and make hams etc to pot pigeons or fowls cut off their legs draw them and wipe them with a cloth but do not wash them season them pretty well with pepper and salt put them into a pot with as much butter as you think will cover them when melted and baked very tender then drain them very dry from the gravy lay them on a cloth and that will suck up all the gravy season them again with salt mace cloves and pepper beaten fine and put them down close into a pot take the butter when cold clear from the gravy set it before the fire to melt and pour over the birds if you have not enough clarify some more and let the butter be near an inch thick above the birds thus you may do all sorts of fowl only wild fowl should be boned but that you may do as you please to pot a cold tongue beef or venison cut it small beat it well in a marble mortar with melted butter season it with mace cloves and nutmeg beat very fine and some pepper and salt till the meat is mellow and fine then put it down close in your pots and cover it with clarified butter thus you may do cold wild fowl or you may pot any sort of cold fowl whole seasoning them with what spice you please to pot venison take a piece of venison fat and lean together lay it in a dish and stick pieces of butter all over tie brown paper over it and bake it when it comes out of the oven take it out of the liquor hot drain it and lay it in a dish when cold take off all the skin and beat it in a marble mortar fat and lean together season it with mace cloves nutmeg black pepper and salt to your mind when the butter is cold that it was baked in take a little of it and beat in with it to moisten it then put it down close and cover it with clarified butter you must be sure to beat it till it is like a paste to pot a hare take a hare that has hung four or five days case it and cut it in quarters put it in a pot season it with pepper salt and mace and a pound of butter over it and bake it four hours when it comes out pick it from the bones and pound it in a mortar with the butter that comes off your gravy and a little beaten cloves and mace till it is fine and smooth then put it close down in potting pots and put clarified butter over it tie it over with white paper to pot tongues take a neat's tongue rub it with a pound of white salt an ounce of saltpetre half a pound of coarse sugar rub it well turn it every day in this pickle for a fortnight this pickle will do several tongues only adding a little more white salt 
or we generally do them after our hams take the tongues out of the pickle cut off the root and boil it well till it will peel then take your tongues and season them with salt pepper cloves mace and nutmeg all beat fine rub it well with your hands whilst it is hot then put it in a pot and melt as much butter as will cover it all over bake it an hour in the oven then take it out let it stand to cool rub a little fresh spice on it and when it is quite cold lay it in your pickling pot when the butter is cold you baked it in take it off clean from the gravy set it in an earthen pan before the fire and when it is melted pour it over the tongue you may lay pigeons or chickens on each side be sure to let the butter be about an inch above the tongue a fine way to pot a tongue take a dried tongue boil it till it is tender take a large fowl bone it a goose and bone it take a quarter of an ounce of mace a quarter of an ounce of cloves a large nutmeg a quarter of an ounce of black pepper beat all well together a spoonful of salt rub the inside of the fowl well and the tongue put the tongue into the fowl then season the goose and fill the goose with the fowl and tongue and the goose will look as if it was whole lay it in a pan that will just hold it melt fresh butter enough to cover it send it to the oven and bake it an hour and a half then uncover the pot and take out the meat carefully drain it from the butter lay it on a coarse cloth till it is cold and when the butter is cold take off the hard fat from the gravy and lay it before the fire to melt put your meat into the pot again and pour the butter over if there is not enough clarify more and let the butter be an inch above the meat and this will keep a great while eats fine and looks beautiful when you cut it it must be cut crossways down through and looks very pretty it makes a pretty corner dish at table or side dish for supper if you cut a slice down the middle quite through lay it in a plate and garnish with green parsley and nasturtium flowers if you will be at the expense bone a turkey and put over the goose observe when you pot it to save a little of the spice to throw over it before the last butter is put on or the meat will not be seasoned enough to pot beef like venison cut the lean of a buttock of beef into pound pieces for eight pounds of beef take four ounces of salt peter four ounces of peter salt a pint of white salt and an ounce of salprinella beat the salts all very fine mix them well together rub the salts into the beef then let it lie four days turning it twice a day then put it into a pan cover it with pump water and a little of its own brine then bake it in an oven with household bread till it is as tender as a chicken then drain it from the gravy and bruise it abroad and take out all the skin and sinews then pound it in a marble mortar lay it in a broad dish mix in it an ounce of cloves and mace three quarters of an ounce of pepper and one nutmeg all beat very fine mix it all very well with the meat then clarify a little fresh butter and mix with the meat to make it a little moist mix it very well together press it down into pots very hard set it at the oven's mouth just to settle and cover it two inches thick with clarified butter when cold cover it with white paper to pot cheshire cheese take three pounds of cheshire cheese and put it into a mortar with half a pound of the best fresh butter you can get pound them together and in the beating add a gill of rich canary wine and half an ounce of mace finely beat then sifted like a fine powder when all is extremely well mixed press it hard down into a galley pot 
cover it with clarified butter and keep it cool a slice of this exceeds all the cream cheese that can be made to collar a breast of veal take a breast of veal and bone it beat it with a rolling pin rub it over with the yolk of an egg beat a little mace cloves nutmeg and pepper very fine with a little salt a handful of parsley and some sweet herbs and lemon peel shred fine a few crumbs of bread mix all together and strew over roll it up very tight bind it with a fillet and wrap it in a cloth then boil it two hours and a half in water made pretty salt then hang it up by one end till cold make a pickle to a pint of salt and water put half a pint of vinegar and lay it in a pan and let the pickle cover it and when you use it cut it in slices and garnish with parsley and pickles to make marble veal take a neat's tongue and boil it till tender peel it and cut it in slices and beat it in a mortar with a pound of butter with a little beaten mace and pepper till it is like a paste have some veal stewed and beat in the same manner put some veal in a potting pot then some tongue in lumps over the veal then some veal over that tongue over that and then veal again press it down hard pour some clarified butter over it keep it in a cold dry place and when you use it cut it in slices and garnish with parsley to collar beef take a piece of thin flank of beef and bone it cut the skin off then salt it with two ounces of saltpetre two ounces of sal prunella two ounces of bay salt half a pound of coarse sugar and two pounds of white salt beat the hard salts fine and mix all together turn it every day and rub it with the brine well for eight days then take it out of the pickle wash it and wipe it dry then take a quarter of an ounce of cloves and a quarter of an ounce of mace twelve corns of allspice and a nutmeg beat very fine with a spoonful of beaten pepper a large quantity of chopped parsley with some sweet herbs chopped fine sprinkle it on the beef and roll it up very tight put a coarse cloth round and tie it very tight with beggar's tape boil it in a large copper of water if a large collar six hours a small one five hours take it out and put it in a press till cold if you have never a press put it between two boards and a large weight upon it till it is cold then take it out of the cloth and cut it into slices garnish with raw parsley to collar salmon take a side of salmon cut off about a handful of the tail wash your large piece very well and dry it with a cloth then wash it over with the yolks of eggs then make some force meat with that you cut off the tail but take care of the skin and put to it a handful of parboiled oysters a tail or two of lobster the yolks of three or four eggs boiled hard six anchovies a good handful of sweet herbs chopped small a little salt cloves mace nutmeg pepper all beat fine and grated bread work all these together into a body with the yolks of eggs lay it all over the fleshy part and a little more pepper and salt over the salmon so roll it up into a collar and bind it with broad tape then boil it in water salt and vinegar but let the liquor boil first then put in your collar a bunch of sweet herbs sliced ginger and nutmeg let it boil but not too fast it will take near two hours boiling and when it is enough take it up put it into your sousing pan and when the pickle is cold put it to your salmon and let it stand in it till used or you may pot it after it is boiled pour clarified butter over it it will keep longer so but either way is good if you pot it 
be sure the butter be the nicest you can get to make dutch beef take the lean of a buttock of beef raw rub it well with brown sugar all over and let it lie in a pan or tray two or three hours turning it two or three times then salt it well with common salt and saltpetre and let it lie a fortnight turning it every day then roll it very straight in a coarse cloth put it in a cheese press a day and a night and hang it to dry in a chimney when you boil it you must put it in a cloth when it is cold it will cut in slivers as dutch beef to make sham brawn take the belly piece and head of a young pork rub it well with saltpetre let it lie three or four days wash it clean boil the head and take off all the meat and cut it in pieces have four neat's feet boiled tender take out the bones and cut it in thin slices and mix it with the head and lay it in the belly piece and roll it up tight and bind it round with sheet tin and boil it four hours take it up and set it on one end put a trencher on it within the tin and a large weight upon that and let it stand all night in the morning take it out and bind it with a fillet put it in spring water and salt and it will be fit for use when you use it cut it in slices like brawn garnish with parsley observe to change the pickle every four or five days and it will keep a long time to souse a turkey in imitation of sturgeon you must take a fine large turkey dress it very clean dry and bone it then tie it up as you do sturgeon put into the pot you boil it in one quart of white wine one quart of water one quart of good vinegar and a very large handful of salt let it boil skim it well and then put in the turkey when it is enough take it out and tie it tighter let the liquor boil a little longer and if you think the pickle wants more vinegar or salt add it when it is cold and pour it upon the turkey it will keep some months covering it close from the air and keeping it in a dry cool place eat it with oil vinegar and sugar just as you like it some admire it more than sturgeon it looks pretty covered with fennel for a side dish to pickle pork bone your pork cut it into pieces of a size fit to lie in the tub or pan you design it to lie in rub your pieces well with saltpetre then take two parts of common salt and two of bay salt and rub every piece well lay a layer of common salt in the bottom of your vessel cover every piece over with common salt lay them one upon another as close as you can filling the hollow places on the sides with salt as your salt melts on the top strew on more lay a coarse cloth over the vessel a board over that and a weight on the board to keep it down keep it close covered it will thus ordered keep the whole year put a pound of saltpetre and two pounds of bay salt to a hog a pickle for pork which is to be eat soon you must take two gallons of pump water one pound of bay salt one pound of coarse sugar six ounces of saltpetre boil it all together and skim it when cold cut the pork in what pieces you please lay it down close and pour the liquor over it lay a weight on it to keep it close and cover it close from the air and it will be fit to use in a week if you find the pickle begins to spoil boil it again and skim it when it is cold pour it on your pork again to make veal hams cut the leg of veal like a ham then take a pint of bay salt two ounces of saltpetre and a pound of common salt mix them together with an ounce of juniper berries beat rub the ham well and lay it on a hollow tray with the skinny side downwards 
baste it every day with the pickle for a fortnight and then hang it in wood smoke for a fortnight you may boil it or parboil it and roast it in this pickle you may do two or three tongues or a piece of pork to make beef hams you must take the leg of a fat but small beef the fat scotch or welsh cattle is best and cut it ham fashion take an ounce of bay salt an ounce of saltpetre a pound of common salt and a pound of coarse sugar this quantity for about fourteen or fifteen pounds weight and so accordingly if you pickle the whole quarter rub it with the above ingredients turn it every day and baste it well with the pickle for a month take it out and roll it in bran or sawdust then hang it in wood smoke where there is but little fire and a constant smoke for a month then take it down and hang it in a dry place not hot and keep it for use you may cut a piece off as you have occasion and either boil it or cut it in rashers and broil it with poached eggs or boil a piece and it eats fine cold and will sliver like dutch beef after this beef is done you may do a thick brisket of beef in the same pickle let it lie a month rubbing it every day with the pickle then boil it till it is tender hang it in a dry place and it eats finely cold cut in slices on a plate it is a pretty thing for a side dish or for supper a shoulder of mutton laid in this pickle for a week hung in wood smoke two or three days and then boiled with cabbage is very good to make mutton hams you must take a hind quarter of mutton cut it like a ham take an ounce of saltpetre a pound of coarse sugar a pound of common salt mix them and rub your ham lay it in a hollow tray with the skin downwards baste it every day for a fortnight then roll it in sawdust and hang it in the wood smoke a fortnight then boil it and hang it in a dry place and cut it out in rashers and broil it as you want to make pork hams you must take a fat hind quarter of pork and cut off a fine ham take two ounces of saltpetre a pound of coarse sugar a pound of common salt and two ounces of salprinella mix all together and rub it well let it lie a month in this pickle turning and basting it every day then hang it in wood smoke as you do beef in a dry place so as no heat comes to it and if you keep them long hang them a month or two in a damp place and it will make them cut fine and short never lay these hams in water till you boil them and then boil them in a copper if you have one or the biggest pot you have put them in the cold water and let them be four or five hours before they boil skim the pot well and often till it boils if it is a very large one three hours will boil it if a small one two hours will do provided it be a great while before the water boils take it up half an hour before dinner pull off the skin and throw raspings finely sifted all over hold a red-hot fire shovel over it and when dinner is ready take a few raspings in a sieve and sift all over the dish then lay in your ham and with your finger make fine figures round the edge of the dish be sure to boil your ham in as much water as you can and to keep it skimming all the time till it boils it must be at least four hours before it boils this pickle does finely for tongues afterwards to lie in it a fortnight and then hang in the wood smoke a fortnight or to boil them out of the pickle yorkshire is famous for hams and the reason is this their salt is much finer than ours in london it is a large clear salt and gives the meat a fine flavour i used to have it from malden in essex and that salt will make any ham as fine as you can desire 
it is by much of the best salt for salting of meat a deep hollow wooden tray is better than a pan because the pickle swells about it when you broil any of these hams in slices or bacon have some boiling water ready and let the slices lie a minute or two in the water then broil them it takes out the salt and makes them eat finer to make bacon take a side of pork then take off all the inside fat lay it on a long board or dresser that the blood may run away rub it well with good salt on both sides let it lie thus a day then take a pint of bay salt a quarter of a pound of saltpetre beat them fine two pounds of coarse sugar and a quarter of a peck of common salt lay your pork in something that will hold the pickle and rub it well with the above ingredients lay the skinny side downwards and baste it every day with the pickle for a fortnight then hang it in wood smoke as you do the beef and afterwards hang it in a dry place but not hot you are to observe that all hams and bacon should hang clear from everything and not against a wall observe to wipe off all the old salt before you put it into this pickle and never keep bacon or hams in a hot kitchen or in a room where the sun comes it makes them all rusty to save potted birds that begin to be bad i have seen potted birds which have come a great way often smell so bad that nobody could bear the smell for the rankness of the butter and by managing them in the following manner have made them as good as ever was eat set a large saucepan of clean water on the fire when it boils take off the butter at the top and take the fowls out one by one throw them into that saucepan of water half a minute whip it out and dry it in a clean cloth inside and out so do all till they are quite done scold the pot clean when the birds are quite cold season them with mace pepper and salt to your mind put them down close in a pot and pour clarified butter over them to pickle mackerel called cavich cut your mackerel into round pieces and divide one into five or six pieces to six large mackerel you may take one ounce of beaten pepper three large nutmegs a little mace and a handful of salt mix your salt and beaten spice together then make two or three holes in each piece and thrust the seasoning into the holes with your finger rub the piece all over with the seasoning fry them brown in oil and let them stand till they are cold then put them into vinegar and cover them with oil they will keep well covered a great while and are delicious End of section 30